the idea was that this this discussion develops into something of a, of a very short, not not a complex, but a short reflection on 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 the two days what happened. And I asked a couple of people to to, to come forward uh, and and share uh, from your own point of view, from the point of view of your own uh, discipline or, or research, what what has been. Uh, and what are the, the implications of utopia and democracy and what we discussed in the past two days, maybe adding some, some aspect of, of the current, current issues uh, uh, with the climate emergency. So Eva and, and Mirth and, and both of the Zoltans, can you please come forward? Uh, this is just a comfortable way. Oh, yeah. Everybody can just, um, they did a very, uh, uh, I very don't mean this. It's, this table is not round anyway, so... Um, no, but excuse uh, me, but this, uh, I mean, Louises. people can be heard much better if they are not from the floor, not speaking from the floor, but perhaps from the front. Uh -huh. I have difficulty in hearing sometimes, depending on the place where the person is. Okay, then then let's leave it to, to your to up to you. So if, if you don't mind coming up in front, then please, please come. But if, if that's difficult then then of course you can stay uh then speaking up a little bit more and maybe maybe we could we could begin with with luisa so so as you suggested you would contribute to this final discussion and please uh, make your contribution and remarks thank you and thank you all those who spoke during these two days in fact i've been thinking about uh the fact that we have been going through many different points of view, uh, many disciplines, uh, literature, philo philosophy, sociology, history, many countries, and that we have had uh, many, um, many proposals to face uh, the question of utopia. So it, it seems to me that uh, um, one of the, one of the, uh, a stimuli came from a um, question from the floor in this last debate. Uh, it was the question, how do you convince? So, the, in fact, I had been feeling that we had been going through two poles. There are two different poles. One uh, that starts from... Uh, um, proposals that are very concrete, very practical, very in, well informed, and that um, are on a macro level, uh, rather than another poll, which starts from a micro level, talking about individuals, small communities, uh, subjectivity, desires, fears, psychological and cultural aspects of life. Uh, these two poles um, are not immediately reconcilable. I see that we have been moving between them uh, without finding often points of, uh, of convergence. And that uh, uh, certainly the macro level has always a degree of normativity such as, uh, in the words by Gregory, a modern utopia must be a utopia, an urban proposal or no donation to parties and so on. So uh, while uh, some optimism could come from the fact that the very prospect of a utopia, without the pretension, without the claim to put it into practice perfectly and completely, would allow many micro efforts and some macro endeavors to modify the situation in the present and the next future on the level also of, da of daily life, where uh, uh, small communities and individuals take up meanings, where differences such as gender, race, age, take up meanings and have a role. And uh, where we utopians, to use uh, the, the terms uh, uh, used by philosophers in the double sense of 
being without a fixed place and being uh, carriers of utopia in the sense of the betterment of ourselves and our communities, uh, where we can recognize that utopia has become necessary. These are the words of another Italian philosopher, Roberto Esposito, who considered a few years ago that after the sequence of terror acts by groups, by individuals, by nations, utopia had become necessary. It 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 necessary to have a, a prospect, a perspective in which our roles as individuals take a meaning, take up a meaning, and in which the small well, what can appear small struggles of every day uh, take up a sense and a direction and and uh, uh, can be linked with other other ones. Um, otherwise, which is the role of subjectivity, of desires, of fears, of the psychological and cultural aspects of life, the role of women, youth, old, what is our possibility if we don't have something that is not normative and something that comes directly from ourselves and our relationship with the other? Now, I don't want to privilege uh, in this debate the subjective side, which I can uh, uh, I can decide to privilege in other um, uh, in other environments and in my own writings and so on. But I would like that we could, uh, in a sort of fraternal effort, keep these two poles, keep this tension between these two poles, understanding that we have to go through this double road and find ways of convergence. Uh, if you go through this series of interesting papers and efforts to understand and to conjugate democracy and, uh, and utopia, you see that there is an effort to do in order to uh, reconcile this view, not in the tension of pacifying, not in the sense of pacifying everything, but of considering that we have been moving between two, two poles. Uh, this is not an easy reflection because so many points of view have been represented. And so I don't know how clear I've been, but you may perhaps help to clarify further. And in this sense, I see uh, sparks of optimism possible. In, in this sort of starting right now to uh, conjugate uh, utopia as hope if without the, the claim to full realization, to perfection, and democracy as a practice in our daily relationships. Thank you very much. I think it was a very nice framework that you began this uh, workshop with, with describing the difference between utopico and utopistico, the pejorative and the positive sense of utopia. And now you added that utopia, uh, I understand probably in the positive sense, has become uh, necessary. Would anyone like to respond to this? Or, or can, I, can I then ask uh, uh, perhaps Mirth to, to, to reflect on, on on uh, what uh, what is from point of view from your your own point of view the the uh, um, what what have we learned in these two days what is it uh, relevant for you from your own uh, uh, field which is which is the classics yeah um, well I, I was now of course thinking more from my personal point of view please so feel free. Such a, uh, but um, since we came back quickly to the, the distinction between utopical and utopistico, the, the sort of the two Janus faced, let's say, idea of uh, utopia, um, 
I recently read that uh, Elon Musk is uh, buying land in, in Texas to found some kind of corporate uh, town uh, where people would just all the time be basically um, have a lot of food, um, amenities around them, and spas and all of that. So the idea seems to be that, um, uh, you know, why go home if you can live at work? So, uh, so what to me seems a bit uh, um, um, sort of interesting in this idea, but also a bit scary, is that when you get to the face, when you don't really know anymore whether it's a utopia or a dystopia. So, because on the on the one hand, uh, because I was actually talking to uh, an acquaintance I had in Pisa, uh, who was from Pakistan, and he worked in the in the IT sector. Um, and he had a, an acquaintance who, who was in the process of uh, accepting a job in one of these more corporate towns that, for instance, Google creates. And I said, like, but that's a horrible way of life. How, how can you live like that? It's almost like slavery. He said, no, I want to live like this. It's wonderful if you just have all these kind of um, facilities around you. And then I just thought, like, yeah, but uh, how can you even... Uh, you know, have a discussion about the future of society if you just disagree about what a utopia is and what a, whether something, a, a certain scenario is, is a utopia or a dystopia, then, then it becomes very difficult to even talk about uh, the future. So I, um, so that is one thing that came to mind. And, um, uh, um, yeah, a, a, another thing that, um, so I can't really summarize very easily what I've learned over the past two days because there were so many things. But another thing that came to mind is the question whether um, democracy can, I mean, when we are talking about the relationship between utopia and democracy, whether in some cases democracy can actually hamper us moving towards a more utopian scenario when um, there are so many disagreements about how on more local levels uh, we should implement a number of changes to 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 make uh, the planet still or to, to to ensure that the planet remains uh, livable for instance in, in the Netherlands there was recently uh, elections for the senate and then there was this farmer party which now in parliament has only one seat but in the senate they now i could think of 18. Um, which basically uh, capitalizes on the idea that they are resisting government plans uh, to um, disown farmers because there is a huge discussion about um, uh, um, this kind of nitrogen gases in the country and then there is a small map in which provinces they should reduce the, the nitrogen gas and then there are like these farmers who are protesting uh, uh, against that and they now go to a lot of um, uh, support from their own communities saying that they, they don't want to do that, but of course part, a large part of the country so are agrarian. Um, so in this case, um, although they don't have the majority, neither in the parliament nor in the senate, um, uh, the political establishment is now shocked, so much shocked by this result that they think they have to do something with it. So now all the plans to actually implement the reduction of these gases are now sort of put on ice once again. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. In, in this case, sometimes it seems like the democracy is not really helping us to uh, make some of these advances. So, I, I think one of the challenges is also like, how do we do this in a democratic way? So, these were just some of the things that came to mind. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, if any, this this is not so much a round table, more like a roundish room. So if, <laughs> if anybody would like to reflect, feel free. Otherwise, I'd like to ask Eva to, to Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I can maybe pick up from what Myrtle was saying and then try to connect it with some of uh, Lisa and various uh, talks as well. I think as I was listening to Myrtle and previously with, with Gregory, I think, and maybe Lisa is right, that I was in this last few days, there is a certain kind of emphasis on right this 
conflictuality, or maybe that comes up with itself in this field because you have utopia and anti-utopia, or we're talking about utopia and dystopia all the time. But at the same time, I kept thinking that I think that there's this great division, and now we live in a in the society that there's great inequality. So there's a, a, a division between you know who does the kinds of people that deserve some kind of future and the kinds of people who can get some kind of future. As you were talking, Gregory, you kept thinking about it, you know, and I agree with you absolutely. I mean, with this notion of, yes, everything with the climate collapse, that's also very well <laughs> instead of climate crisis. And, you know, this proposal that we should really, you know, the one or 2% of most privileged people and of these Western nations, they should be the ones that will make the, the greatest sacrifices, uh, as you were saying, but at the same time, it's, who do you put in that category? <laughs> There's so much division in this. For example, now this is supposed to be right uh, a workshop on utopian democracy in this very specific space at this in Central Europe in this, at this Central European University. And I completely agree with you that we should be very careful of you know whether it's meat consumption or this you know the flight or any kind of. But at the same time, we're coming. We're finally coming to a new era, and you know. My parents, for example, that have taken two flights in their lives are very happy that we have very, very low budget flights and we have very acceptable prices. So we're still, I think that this kind of, one the one of the problems, in my opinion, with this conversation of climate collapse, uh, climate collapse so far emphasizes the inequality even more. It kind of bridges people into, you cannot ask me to give up of the privileges that I've so, I've waited my entire life to earn at this point, especially for a very, still marginalized part of so-called developed countries and Western countries. And on the other side, the actual privileged uh, few like Elon Musk and those examples. I completely, you know, I had this kind of same notion. I've always struggled with that. Google, for example, is so famous, right? For providing this exceptionally good working place spaces. In my circles, this happens a lot. You have IT people who want to work in the IT sphere only because you will have excellent lunches and really good facilities and good healthcare, which we've never had in our lives working in this area. So then you come to this point of saying, yes, I love the planet and I should give up all of my privileges, but I've waited my whole life to be able to have something that the 1% has, right? So I'm just saying that and my personal interest in utopia actually developed from this kind of conflict between the future and future thinking, Who, what is actually the future for whom in the societies? And who deserves, you know, who can get the kind of future that we're that we're talking about? So that would, I would just say that at this point, yeah. Thank you very much. I can, just cannot stop myself from giving sharing you a little anecdote, which I I was told by the owner of the the catering company who who did all the catering here, and I think it was pretty good quality. He told me that his best customers are certain IT companies in Budapest because their workers have a, a lunch break and they can go out, but the, the owners don't want them to leave because they want them to work more. What's the option? They offer them on site the best possible catering <laughs> that you can have so that you don't you, you want to have food which is, which is offered in your office basically, and then you keep working. Um, okay, that's just a, a minor, minor issue. Uh, if, if there are uh, no more uh, comments, then can I ask uh, either, uh, maybe Zoltan yeah, Balash? Thank you very much for the, uh, again, the invitation. <laughs> yeah. I would like also to begin with a, with a bit of a personal uh, uh, thing. Um, a couple of days ago, we uh, made interviews with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, prospective students at our university from all over the world. Um, we had Vietnam, uh, Colombia, Kyrgyzstan, Turkey, Pakistan, and uh, since they were just high school students, uh, what the question was the question that, 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 that in a way uh, is the, is the uh, most obvious one to ask is you know, what kind of authors are you familiar with, whom you have read? And two persons uh, uh, were the most often mentioned, Marx and Orwell. Uh, astonishingly, I was really, I simply can't, still can't make what, 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 what it really means, but the uh, Orwell is, is, is an absolutely widely read person. I mean, from Pakistan to Vietnam, from either uh, Colombia to Kyrgyzstan, absolutely fascinating. Uh, so yeah, that, that really made, made me think. But the three uh, the things that I really want to, to, want to add is, uh, uh, firstly, <clears throat> I would say that um, what you're, you're talking about is, is absolutely a, 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 a big use notion, absolutely. 
So, uh, as, and, and the ambiguity is, I think, as far as I can see, is connected uh, with two, two, uh, two uh, emotions that we have uh, concerning it. Some people love it, uh, whatever kind of ambiguity we are thinking of. Some people are obsessed with it. Others are skeptical or even fear it. So I don't know how to reconcile these two very, very uh, important uh, emotions. It's not just utopia's desire, utopia. At least it's in, in, in uh, at least it's in the, or, or, or makes you uh, feel stronger, stronger than, than perhaps, um, say, uh, even democracy. Utopia is something which is both attractive and, and, and destructive. Uh, I'm just an observation that I just, uh, I, I want to share with you. And it really makes it very difficult to, uh, to, uh, to discuss in a, in a non emotional impartial uh, manner. The second thing that I, uh, that I, uh, I want to say is uh, that we have touched upon here and there the, uh, the issue of uh, how utopia is being embedded in various uh, political ideologies. It's been connected to liberalism, to uh, anarchism, socialism, uh, perhaps, I don't really remember uh, if there was any, uh, anybody saying that conservatism has a, has a relation with utopia, I think, fortunately. But we haven't mentioned the uh, the, the rightist or extra, the, the extreme rightist versions of utopia. Uh, why not talk about fascism or Nazism? How do they have no uh, utopian uh, roots or or or, sure. or or connections or or, or versions? I don't know. I'm just uh, um, the question is up for the grabs. I don't want to, uh, to answer my own question, of course, but I I just simply missed the, uh, the possibilities of, of, of discussing uh, the rightist utopias. And the uh, and the last and third and last uh, thing point that I uh, wanted to raise is the um, is related to to the point that people and others have already I already raised, and this is that um, and this is something that I also wanted to uh, to uh, cover or with some 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 thoughts in my in my lecture in my talk, which was a theological reflection, uh, and I what I wanted to say is. That the utopia thing is, is really intimately tied up with the, with the Western type and the Western type of thinking. Uh, but and here's a here's a here's a great but. It is quite obvious that not only Western societies believe that democracy is the best, is not perfect, but still best uh, way of, of organizing political uh, political organizing polity. Uh, but there are so, so many other different societies that themselves are also convinced or, or convinced or they're sure, certain that they are the best possible society. You think of North Korea. Are they uh, thinking that they are even a part of the world? Or China, for instance. China, the Chinese society, as far as I can, I can, as far as I know, and it's very superficial thing, but everything that, that I've read about China is that, that they already have, they have a, 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 a thousand euro uh, uh, um, Tradition of thinking that China is the uh, is the center of of, of the globe, and uh, and then they have an empire, right? They have nobody to learn from. Uh, at the same time, uh, they are thinking in terms of a kind of uh, um, um, well, just just I think it would that. And think of Islamic world uh, having the same uh, uh, confidence that they uh, that the that the Quran is just the most perfect. Way of of uh, of uh, arranging uh, uh, private and and, and, and collective uh, uh, ways of living, collective uh, uh, coexistence or cooperation. How can we reconcile all of these vastly different uh, different uh, uh, ways of of, of, of faiths or beliefs? I mean, all of these beliefs are or faiths actually are are, are, are uh, Right, uh, ultimate self confidence or the Ruski near right. Russians are so certainly uh, so sure that they are uh, living in the best possible uh, society, or less. I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm exaggerating. But Many of them probably, they that they, they, hopefully, not all of them. So, I'm just raising this. We have the Ukrainian uh, uh, colleagues who talk about the uh, utopian uh, thinking in the Ukraine. I'm just raising these issues how to, to reconcile our utopian thinking with our utopian sentiments, core and construct. 
uh, with, uh, with with other cultures and people's thinking, uh, uh, the, 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 and many of many of which think that they are already in in uh, living living in the best uh, or in, 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 the, in their own ways, which is just to be really perfect in a scenario. I'm just leaving these questions up in the air. Thank you. Thank you very much. Would anybody like to reflect on these? Because if not, then I would give a, a little bit of reflection, first of all, on, on fascism, Nazism, and, and I would add communism. So I think, but correct me if, if I'm wrong, utopian scholars don't like to talk about them so much because in the middle of the 20th century, this was the reason why mainstream scholars were rejecting utopianism uh, uh, because of the dangers. Because they are clearly, clearly utopian uh, ideologies uh, with utopian attitudes and, and great failures. So that showing that a certain kind of utopianism can be dangerous. Or main argument is that not all kind of utopianism is, is dangerous. Uh, Thomas Molnar, for instance, in the 60s didn't believe in that. He believed that all kind of utopianism is collective. And, and the collective is, is a danger for mankind. And, and my argument would be that uh, Thomas Molnar is absolutely right that collective societies are dangerous, but he is wrong in, in assuming that all kind of utopianism is, is collective. Uh, secondly, um, I don't know too much about many of the societies you mentioned, and I absolutely agree with you that that political uh, systems are culture dependent. I know a little bit about China and clearly China has a historical experience that the collapse of central power, strong, efficient central power leads into chaos and war. And the worst kind of thing that could happen to, to that society is chaos and war. Therefore, the strong central power is 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 a, a very positive notion for for most Chinese people. Um, it seems that that's also the case to some extent in Russia. Although I think the closer we get to to the West, then this notion of the central power, as opposed to the autonomy of the individual, is getting getting weaker and weaker. But then, really, we are at the at the limits of my expertise, so so I didn't want to add anything more. Dino, did you want to? No, I just uh, I thought immediately of Russia when you you said started talking about China and then you, you said it and I thought that it's curious because it's uh, like for example it's just a super tiny comment that it's uh, Russians are obsessed with the idea of killing Zelensky or like harming the the the, the, the central like authority somehow because they don't understand that for us we, we're not so. Um, well, for, for many reasons, uh, firstly, because uh, the digitalization reform in Ukraine has been quite successful, actually, but, but we just overall are not so dependent on a good Tsar to be functioning properly. Of course, it would be a huge political upset in a boring country, uh, but uh, but yeah, so this, uh, this, is, this is a very, 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 very good thing that you pointed out, and this already creates a very strong... Um, like um, this discord and not understanding how each of us functions. So, so yeah. So, 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 so when you you mentioned the how how do we uh, kind of like uh, disprove Ruskin the whole ideology? Yeah, that's it's a. If we would we won't know the answer to this question, maybe maybe the world would not be happening right now. So yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Andre. Please, uh, thank you. I think about that fascism and utopia because I somehow sympathize with that idea that we shouldn't put fascism into some box where everything is specific and it shouldn't be analyzed by same tools which different and more sympathetic political ideologies are analyzed, but. But in the same time, I have to think that maybe there is another reason why fascism is not analyzed uh, by uh, concepts like utopia. And it's based on structure of its ideology. If we consider probably one of the most important pre-fascist thinkers, uh, Georges Sorel, who actually 
form some conceptual basis for fascist ideas. It was his idea was based on explicit explicit differentiation between utopia and myth. And for mm -hmm. him, utopia was capitalism in a similar way which uh, Andrea Kozorki depicted uh, depicted Tamash and even thought that Tamash he quoted so it was not true because he probably quoted some conservative thinkers. But uh, for Sorel, utopia was something stable, intellectual project, which can be, which actually leads to reformism. What is not very intuitive understanding of utopia, but according to him, capitalism was utopia, social democratic version of socialism was utopia, because it's product of intellect, which is planning some future, and then you can have reforms to go there. And for him, the alternative was myth. Something that is evoked most as mobilizing image, something unstable, unprojected, something that touches you, but, but you cannot reduce on intellectual construction. And I think uh, this is telling about fascism or something. Yeah? The, the, they, they are really adherents more of myth than of utopia in this Surrealian distinction. Uh, we can discuss if, if this distinction is valid, of course. But I think this is another reason why it's somehow complicated to study fascist utopia while I sympathize. Thank you very much. Uh, Karl, are you sure you don't want to add something? No, because I, was there was, your uh, I understand, yeah. but there were several instances when you could not. Maybe this is the last <laughs> moment in the workshop. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, I'm not insisting, I'm just... <laughs> um, I have one not terribly serious question that can wait until the very end. Um, but I am sort of curious about the role of technology and how we think about the roots to some kind of utopia. Um, and I'm, I mean, the one figure that immediately leaps to mind is somebody familiar, I think, shows up in the book, Ernst Bloch, um, who's already writing post Lukács, right? He's telling us, let's not, don't reify the social relations, right? If we're gonna, but at the end of the day, he's, his, is a his is a relatively optimistic take. Right, um, but I wonder if that comes at the expense of um, giving the engineers a pass. Right, he's told us to have, you know not. To, he's told us we have to be careful about how we reify nature, and so science doesn't get a pass. Right, because we have to also bring into view the things that science can say nothing about. But maybe he's giving the engineers a pass. I don't know. I mean, Bloch has some earlier work on engineers, but I, on the face, I and mean, it's been a long time since I read it. Um, but on the face of it, I'm not sure how to uh, how to reconcile that critical work on engineers with um, my vagueness, my vague awareness of, it, of, of, of this. Uh, what's it called? The principle of hope. Yeah, with, which I guess is the the anchoring work for utopia for Bloch's relevance to utopian discourse. I, I, if anybody has some reflections here, I'd be grateful. But... Well, I, I do have a long section on Bloch in, in the book. Okay. Because he is the most important modern theorist of utopia. Yeah. He's also a very complicated thinker mm. and he changes his mind about some very important things a number of times. Mm. One of the key questions hanging over this in response to the comment you've offered is how far he remains an orthodox Marxist, even after his embrace of the humanist Marx of the economic and philosophic manuscripts. And then secondly, the degree to which he embraces a kind of mysticism, which is coupled with messianism, uh, and how far that is true right from the beginning, the work on Thomas Munzer. Uh, right through the end of the You say mystic, but some people call them romantic at times, right? Yeah, a lot that. of labels have been attached, which is why, I mean, it's a, he's a complicated thinker to unpack and you have to kind of read him chronologically. There are lots of blockians in uh, utopian studies. 
Right. Most of them read the principle of hope and not anything else and don't tackle as a result the more complex questions of whether he evolves out of positions and takes them. Principle of hope is also a really badly organized book. <laughs> as, books as great books go, maybe for some people that's an advantage. Because you can kind of pick and choose the bits which you find are right. Well, I, I mean, I hold, I hold in on the term neo romantic because, um, you know, the romantics were notoriously focused on the, the role of the creative individual. And I feel like that there, there's, a, there's a thread of this kind of technophilia that actually is enabling the solipsistic utopias of the Peter Thiels of the world. Right? And I just, I, I wouldn't want that to get any theoretical recourse. <laughs> but I don't know, you know, how do we take Block away from? The Peter Thiel's of the world. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think to the degree to which he remains a Leninist in the later writing, so these other objections and alterations notwithstanding, this is a pretty orthodox take on scientific and technological progress as Marx understands it. I mean, Marx is emphatically not a primitivist. I mean, he may be a romantic, at least in the earlier writings, but he's never a primitivist. And you have a quite a challenge has been undertaken by a variety of people turning him into a modern green thinker as well because actually machinery is doing the work that the working class has historically been subordinated and exploited to do in much of Marx's mature as well as his earlier work. So if you think that what Bloch is doing is still essentially uh, ascribing or subscribing to that scheme, then it's not very heterodox. I mean, that's not where the alterations lie. The alterations lie principally in the infusion of a different kind of humanism, not the humanism of the young Marx, but the humanism of the natural law and natural rights tradition, which is his major break from the GDR and from Stalinism. Uh, but in order, as you probably know, I mean, in order to do that, you've got to have an anchor for the origins of the concept of rights. And if you don't do it with theology, it's extremely difficult to do because you've got to have an original donor of the, for the universality and equality of rights. <clears throat> it's all just an artificial and conventional project, then it's a much more difficult enterprise to defend than if you simply say, you know, God creates man and woman and gives them rights at the creation and the rights alter in that kind of progressive way throughout the ages. But they're anchored in an original divine gift, which is basically what the natural law tradition has constantly argued. So it, it also depends on then what you make of that break, of his adaptation of that tradition. That was seen, of course, fundamentally as the most critical standpoint you could take on Marx, who notoriously is hostile to rights in his younger writings in particular. So thank you. Um, yes, I'm. Thank you very much. I just wanna like I'm curious about like what other things like in the room like uh, these two days have been quite useful for me. Thank you very much. So my question is just like oh, more or less better question: How can or should we more should we promote utopian thinking and be hopeful in constructive sense in the face of a highly polarized and politicized society when there are different versions of democracy? In a, especially in a country that leans towards more autocratic regime, you know, or practices. And if the governing body uses the same bit of rhetoric of being democratic and also, you know, respecting democracy, so how can you refute this approach for a more maybe democratic society to lead to more transformation? Because I think this is in the case of like, Turkey, you know, the current government also claims that they are the most democratic party, you know, that they use democratic discourse a lot and then that's the best for the benefit of the society. So, you know, how should we react to this, especially as academics or as intellectuals like and you know, in our engagement with the public especially. I'm just curious what it may not be Do you have a response to this? Anyone? Yes. <laughs> Yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Just what came to my mind that the government of Hungary also claims itself to be democratic, illiberal democracy, as it may the term may be. But then the the government of Janos Kadar also claimed to be democratic, people's republic, people's democracy. But nevertheless, democracy 
So that's uh, uh, and and um, 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 the, I can recommend this very very small book, the the, the um, Oxford. Uh, um, um, what is it? Very short introduction into democracy of Bernard Greek, who begins with a list of of major uh, despots in 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 the twentieth century. All of them called themselves democrats, with all kinds of people's democracy, Muslim democracy, whatever. But so that's. Uh, uh, it seems that Zoltan has to leave your house. So. <laughs> I understand. I, I was summoned by my son. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for pleasure. being with us. <laughs> for me to be here and to listen to all of your presentations, they were all fantastic. But the future <laughs> is calling you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm not sure if we can answer uh, Emra's question in any any better way. Oops. Um, yes, please. One proposition, maybe, uh, perhaps, if, uh, if we're thinking long term, so for the uh, of the global state of affairs, of the global policy, uh, perhaps if people, the states will probably become less sovereign, a bit less than just valiant, so to say. So uh, maybe we could think about it more in July of Kantian political thought, perhaps. Because uh, with him, the focus is not on democracy, very much on liberalism, very much on rule of law and equality, mm -hmm. not so much on democracy. He actually disliked democracy, but that's because he perceived it in Greek terms, but you know, still. And uh, perhaps the focus would be more on uh, re establishing constitutions and putting the, the very focus on keeping the earth alive in the constitutional state and then running it perhaps in a more technocratic way than we are doing it now is uh, something I came up with and just a little rough thought. This was actually in, in the very beginning after Louisa's talk about Utopica and Utopistico, we learned that from a philosophical point of view, we seem to put too much load on, on, on the concept of democracy, uh, good government and a lot of other things uh, in, in our imaginary is linked to, to, to democracy. Would, would anybody like to, to reflect on that? Or I'm wondering if Greg, you would like to make a final word or has it been already? I think you've heard <laughs> enough from me to, be able to tell the truth. And that, I think this has been a really fruitful discussion over the last few years. I will say that uh, I've learned a lot from, from all sorts of different perspectives. And we look forward to the opportunity of being able to do this on a a bigger scale again at some point. Uh huh. Okay. And also, we're looking forward to, to try to put it into a, 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 a printed volume um, um, sooner or later. And I also then then remains nothing just to 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 thank you all for this. I, I look at also in a concept uh, in in a journey amongst uh, concepts and and nations and and historical epochs, beginning from from ancient Greece. Uh, but also going through Italy and in the 1960s and then contemporary Italian societies, uh, com uh, communities rather. Um, but we, we discussed uh, uh, contemporary Turkey and, and um, uh, contemporary Ukrainian literature, but Soviet Russian literature in the 1920s, uh, Yugoslavia in the 20th century, Ireland in the early 20th century, um, ideologies and utopia, liberalism, uh, um, uh, political realism, uh, political theology, uh, a lot of lot of concepts and eras and epochs and approaches. Nevertheless, I don't have the feeling that it was all fragmented and 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 uh, but 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 we seem to have a, 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 um, something in common by the concepts of utopia and democracy, uh, for instance, so, so this was this was really uh, something very interesting for me. Uh, I'm not a native speaker in English, and sometimes I'm a little bit surprised on expressions. Like in the Utopia Studies Society, a lot of distinguished professors call themselves the students of Utopia. I heard it several times. So we study something, and therefore we are students. And I also feel that I'm a student of of Utopia, of the concept of democracy, of 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 a lot of 
uh, other things. And I feel I've studied a, a lot here. So thank you very much for this. And, and uh, uh, well, um, I hope um, when we leave, we're, we're leaving uh, more clever than we, when we came here. At least <laughs> definitely that's the case for me. So uh, I don't want to keep you waiting for any longer. There, there's a, 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 some, a duty I have to make that we were asked to, to, to return these badges. So if you still have it with you, I would like to ask you. Otherwise, once again, thank you very much and have a stay safe way home. If, if you feel like you can visit the Pope who is uh, next door at uh, the Basilica. By the way, he was em he keeps emphasizing the importance of brotherhood, uh, claiming that, that liberty and, and equality have been uh, um, strongly emphasized in, in secular uh, ways, but not so much fraternity. Uh, okay, once again, thank you very much for all of you.